I ran into a kid in Seattle, a kid, 26 year old, um, at a book at a book signing, and I saw him out of the corner of my eye, standing in the corner, and was kind of frightened by him. Not in physically, but I mean, oh God, I hope it's not a manuscript he's got to give me, and that which is hell, of course. To, and the guy, the, finally the reading ended and he hung around and I could feel him out of the corner of my eye approach me and he had me sign his book and I did. And he began to leave and then he turned around and he said, I think he knew my father. And as soon as he said those words, uh, I knew who the kid was. I saw it in his face, you could see his dad in that kid's face. It was my platoon leader in Vietnam. Uh, and he, told me over the course of the next, I don't know, 20 minutes or half hour that he had, the kid, had been searching for his father ever since. His father had committed suicide soon after Vietnam and uh, had looked for his dad in very brave, cool ways. He had joined the army just to see what his father had gone through. He'd become a Green Beret to see what his dad had been, and a ranger, all this tough snake eating, you know, stuff. And he had picked up my first book and his father figures in the book, not in always in the most laudatory ways. In fact, not in laudatory ways. Well, that encounter, I mean, makes me want to cry. If I weren't on camera, I'd be a little tears in my eyes now because it's an example of why I began writing in the first place. I wanted to touch people in, in a way that, that stories can touch them. And I had helped in a very modest way for this fellow to fill in a gap of who this man had been who had committed suicide before they even knew his father. His father killed himself when he was very, I think he was like six months old or eight months, very young. Um, Encounters like that remind me of why I began. It's easy to forget why you, why you become a writer. And letters I'll get from the girlfriends of people in Iraq or Afghanistan or the children, which all say the same thing. Basically, I don't know my dad, and he won't talk about it, or my mom in some cases, but largely men. And we, I read your book, and now I know at least something of what he's carrying around with him. And, what he won't talk about, and sometimes the book will be shared with the veteran. And conversation will ensue, and that is way beyond anything I intended in the writing of the book. I didn't intend to bring people together or start them talking, but it shows you the power of, of literature. It, can, it really touches individual people, real lives, and the real world, and contributes to their lives, it does something to their lives. Uh, that, that's what I dreamed of when I began writing. I dreamed of touching some 15-year-old kid in Dubuque or some grieving mother in you know, Harlem. Literature makes you feel, if it's any good, it, it can make you feel a little less alone in the world. And someone else has gone through this. and. It gives you some late night company um, with your memories and your sorrow. Literature does touch people. It's not just to be read in English classes.